Uh, good Monday morning and chill. Um, <laughs> we're a little bit, a little bit early today, actually. Well, actually, today is going to be uh, a, a super chill Monday for you guys, um, but maybe not so much for me. Uh, we're going to have a triple header actually this week. So um, a little bit later, um, we're going to do a, a walkthrough of picture installs and the uplift. Um, in a couple hours from now, we're going to have uh, um, Everstake on the channel, and they're going to give us a run through of that. But uh, first up, we've got uh, John Williamson, who uh, is a programmer over on EOS, and he has kind of started um, a new social kind of platform running on EOS, which right now actually uh, might be the only one. I don't know of any others that are actually running. There were a few uh, back in the day, um, but it looks like the majority of them um, have either ported over to other chains or, or left EOSIO um, entirely um, or haven't been doing anything um, for a while, uh, even though they promised to be the be all and end all of social apps that were going to uh, reform the whole system. Uh, there's a little bit of shade being thrown at voice there. Uh, for a reason. Um, now, I, I'm curious about, uh, we'll, we'll jump into the platform and look about it uh, later, but I'm curious about like the tagline, because everywhere I'm looking, I'm seeing, um, you know, what voice should have been. Um, so welcome, John, and uh, let's dive in. Thank you. Thanks for, for having me. So tell us about <laughs> Violet Garden. Um, and why violets? I mean, why not roses? Why not uh, peaches? <laughs> Um, mainly Violet Garden came from, well, first, uh, Garden was sort of based on, you know, the Garden of Eden. So I thought I could sort of continue the name, uh, there. Uh, and then it's also a sort of, um, top level domain as well. So, uh, I didn't have to have, you know, the .com and everything in the domain either. So that was an appeal. Uh, and then Violet, um, it's sort of similar to voice in, in, in the sort of spelling. You still got the, you know, the V-I-O uh, like, like voice did. So I think I wanted sort of something sort of similar in, in, in spelling uh, so I could sort of get the, the the token symbol, you know, rather than, you know, V-O-I, which what you might have a voice, it'll be, you know, V-I-O instead. So uh, I don't know. I it's, it's just mainly just sounded nice to me, Violet. So I um, thought I'd go with that. But uh, not everyone's a fan of it. Some some people think of uh, Violet Garden instead. So I don't know. Maybe I'll throw it back at the community and let them vote on a uh, on on a rename. We'll see. Um, yeah. So a little bit about you. Uh, you've been a programmer in the space for 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 a while now. Um, what yeah. other projects have you been working on? Um, uh, my, my first sort of uh, project was with uh, back in the day with Dallas Rushing on the uh, on, on the Karma project, and so uh, perhaps that could have been the, the sort of first social media site uh, on on there. There was a few sort of small ones out there. I remember sort of like a a Twitter kind of version. It was very very basic, but uh, yeah, perhaps uh, Karma was a sort of you know the big bigger one. Uh, yeah, so that kind of got my foot in the door in terms of you know, developing uh, taps and everything on EOS, uh, and then and that was a lot of fun despite it sort of you know going going downhill and uh, and and whatever it is today. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the uh, one of the first uh, videos I actually ever did, um, you know, because I, I used to be a writer, but one of the first videos I actually ever did was with uh, uh, Jack Wales of of Discussions app. Um, and that came out of a post that I wrote um, where I reviewed uh, short form and long form uh, content platforms that were running on EOS or ESIO. And uh, I remember like, you know, Karma came out with like kind of a bang. Um, they were killing it for a while. Um, they just kind of ran out of steam. And I think part of that was the fact that they, you know, ported over to Wax. And at that time, Wax wasn't nearly as active as it is now. I mean, Discussions app is still going a little bit on there. Um, a lot of these other ones, like, they've kind of died out. I think Murmur was doing okay, but now I, nobody's even, I haven't even heard of it or used it. Um, I used to work for Tribe, actually. And Tribe was like a longer content uh, forum. And, and um, you know, I know our company applied for, um, you know, try to get funding to, um, 
you know, build that up. But like instead they gave fun in the voice, which kind of annoyed us because we pretty much had a whole platform that was all built out. And, and in the end, um, Tribe just recently um, rebranded as Loop and, and picked up and moved shop, uh, you know, over to the Terra blockchain uh, for the main the main reason. Um, is because they actually are getting funding um, from, you know, support. So what do you think, like, is the issue with, you know, getting funding as a social DAP? Do you think that this is a, a problem? Sorry, I've got, like, about 10 different questions, and I'm trying to figure out which ones I want to ask first because I know that some are going to lead into the others. So, maybe, like, like, what do you think that the issue is about getting funding for a social DAP, right? Like, Because a lot of these projects, a lot of projects, they, they do use Twitter, right? And they do use uh, Medium, um, and, and, and they use these non-blockchain -block, uh, social media centers just because that's where everyone uses. And it's funny to me that... Like all the blockchain people use the non-blockchain apps because everybody who um, is is in blockchain is using the non-blockchain uh, apps. It's it's kind of backwards in a way, right? Um, so I, I don't know if you have any take on that, but it, is there a problem with it because it's funding? Is there a problem with it because it's development? Is there a problem with it just because people go where everyone is and nobody wants to take that first leap? Like. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I think it starts with the sort of network effect. So again, each of these sort of social media sites that we have now, they're sort of, you know, uh, they're fenced off from each other. So again, you can't use Snapchat to message someone on Facebook and, and things like that. So the value of them is based on the amount of people uh, on there to create, you know, new connections. Uh, and then I think when it comes to, to, to sort of decentralized social media, Despite there being the sort of censorship resistance, I still think there needs to be more of a selling point uh, on, on, on there purely because of the friction that you get by, you know, doing things by means of a blockchain. Uh, and, and that's where the sort of, you know, tokenomics come in and, and, and sort of having uh, a, a selling point that only the blockchain can bring uh, that, that, that a centralized app uh, can't um, other, other than, you know, just straight up censorship. Um, one of the, the, the problems that we had with Karma was again, spam um, and then inviting new users to, to it because again, there's convincing someone to, to create a new account and then there's you know, convincing someone to you know, pay for one as well and, you know, and, and jump into the, the, the blockchain world. And, um, and, the, and that was difficult because we were you know, willing to put some money you know, forward for you know, paying for RAM, paying for CPU and you know, net bandwidth and stuff like that. But, you know, you just had no idea if you were just paying for bots or if you're paying for for, for real people. Uh, so I think voice, oh, sorry, voice sort of clones or you know, social media work networks inspired by voice, you know, work because they that they need KYC. And then you know, with with Eden, that's my sort of you know missing puzzle piece. So without Eden, uh, I wouldn't be able to just really really do Violet Garden uh, the, the way that it's done today, and will be able to support free cpu free ram and things like that uh as, as as well right yeah so there was another question i wanted to ask you um i participated um in the even election yeah. um uh, overall how did you find it what, what did you think just general overall experience yeah yeah i thought it was uh it, it, it was great it was a lot of fun um the, the the clarion team did an amazing job with the uh with with, with the portal that they made i, th I thought it was pretty pretty fluid pretty polished so uh yeah no it's, it's, it's always fun i did a uh I, again i went to the test election everything before but uh yeah no it's just great jumping into a random group of people and uh you know talk, talking about eos and, and what's gonna happen and things like that so yeah no, I, it's a really cool experience yeah i i participated in the in, in the second trial election um, and, and I was quite vocal, like in a very kind way, but I was quite vocal about like how, how many issues I just had, right, with it. Hmm. And like, I can honestly say that like the Clarion team came in and, you know, I've, I'm sure they didn't even know about me, but like they came in and they solved every single one of those issues. So like they, hmm. they picked up what needed to be done. And uh, like, like you, I was like really impressed. I was a little bit freaked out because, um, you know, we were in the Zoom call uh, earlier. Um, and, you know, listening to the Clarion team talk about how the election process was going to work and stuff. And I was just like, man, like this, are, are you sure? Like this, 
nah, this, it can't be that easy. It's not going to work that well. Like, uh, you know, we're in blockchain. We're not used to things going off without a hitch that good, but it really did. It was a really uh, interesting process. So I thought that was pretty great. Um, and uh, yeah, I, we're actually, uh, Corey and I are actually doing a round table um, this Thursday uh, over on the Crypto Rider channel. We're going to have Dan and Zach and uh, um, a couple other people um, from the, I guess, the, the, the round table. Um, sorry, it's too early to be late to lose my train of thought. Sorry. Well, I, we're going to have four or five people on the round table uh, to discuss uh, both the operations of the round table and more like along the lines of, of how the how the process went um, for people. Um, now, I went in with no intention of running. Um, and there was only one person in our group that ran and I, I was, I was kind of a jerk if I'm honest about it. Cause like, I was like, I was like, like he, he had an idea to use the funding, but I was just like, you know, I was trying to push him to, 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 to do something more. I'm not really sure what happened in the second round. Maybe he came out with that. I, it was good. Uh, in the end, we all voted for him. We all pushed him through because, um, you know, he was doing something. Somebody pointed that out. So that was good. Right. But like, I, I actually do really believe in the process. Um, I haven't watched back all those videos yet. I've watched back some of them. Um, un unfortunately, I haven't had time to watch yours back. So I'm not really sure what you ran for. But you actually went pretty far in the election. You, you got through, you know, um, quite some way. Um, so I'm kind of curious, like, what were you running on? And did your um, did your proposal for what you were running on change over time, actually? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so my original yeah proposal was again, yeah, pushing uh, funding and sort of development for uh, for Pilot Garden. Uh, but there also was a, a bit of funding to also go towards a sort of, you know, redesign and sort of rebranding of the current uh, EOS community sort of website. Uh, so basically give, give because again, we've got a few things, you know, moving up. We've got Eden on EOS and then there's Eden. So again, the Clarion guys are making a sort of um, Eden framework and Eden software that people can use to, you know, perform the Eden elections and things like that. But again, we don't really have a strong, polished website for Eden on, on EOS as, as as a group yet. Uh, we, we sort of got the EOS community's website, but again, I don't think that's the best quality, and I don't think it quite reflects exactly, you know, what what, what we're about. Uh, and, and, and their leadership as well. So uh, part of the funding that I was going for was going to, to um, yeah, in, in invest in that. And that's something that I'll also propose with the uh, other chief delegates uh, as, as, as well, because I think uh, that's really important. We need something that um, explains what, what Eden on, on, on EOS is, is, is about and, and it looks polished and, uh, and the information that's available is, is nice and consumable uh, as well. Uh, but other than that, so yeah, it was all Violet Garden. I was pretty, pretty clear that I, I was going for for Violet Garden because uh, again, the, the funds, you know, the, the funds even on the top level is still quite you know limited. So, you know, I, I wasn't you know, I didn't want to say, oh yeah, we'll put funding towards this, we'll put funding towards that, and make a bunch of promises <laughs> that you know that can't be kept, or just give you know give out pieces of money that are so small that makes you know no change at all. I think it was better to sort of you know, go more all in on one, you know, one project and, and, and say, you know, we've done this and we've done this well, rather than we've, we've done this and, you know, we've, you know, invested in five things and we've all come up with, you know, mediocre results. So, uh, yeah, I don't, my pitch didn't really, uh, change throughout the rounds. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, um, and, uh, like, the site looks good. I've used it a couple of times. Um, there's no, you know, there's a few glitches, but there's no major problems um, hmm. as, as technology will be. Um, I mean, we have glitches in our project like daily. Um, so uh, you can log in via Anchor, uh, which is nice. And you log in um, into your uh, Eden account. So, so you must yep. log in into your Eden account. You can't use it if you don't have an Eden account, if you haven't become a, a member. Um, why did you choose uh, to go this route? Uh, well, one first reason was, was because it was easy. You know, by, by having Eden only, I immediately have verified unique identity. Because, uh, because again, part of the you know Violet is the sort of fifty bio tokens per day, you know, per per user. So you know, and, unless I've got unique identity, that, that can easily be you know gamed. Uh, people can just you know create accounts and sort of spam the system. 
Uh, and then so with Eden as well, I've immediately got, you know, profiles, I've got their names, I've got their social media, like their telegram, I've got their pictures and stuff like that. So couldn't really ask for a better way of sort of bootstrapping a, a sort of social media site than, you know, immediately having, you know, access to to, to their information and, uh, and and already having an EOS account as well. And then the sort of second reason is that um, part of the goal, like, like I don't see Violet Garden as being, you know, trying to be a, a competitor of, you know, Facebook, you know, I, I want to make a sort of, you know, social media product that is, you know, good, re really good for, a, a, you know, a few amount of people rather than, you know, uh, try to take on the world and have every user in the world, you know, sort of, sort of use it. Uh, so have, keeping it Eden centric, I think is, 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 is key to, to keeping that sort of sense of community there and sort of having that, you know, uh, sim similar values, because again, if you're, if you're on Eden, you know, we're, we're all going to have differences of opinion, but again, we we sort of, we have that to, to, to share. We're not just, you know, randoms on a social media site kind of thing. So, uh, that, that's another reason of sort of, you know, keeping it within, even for now, that that may change, or we may come up with you know different ways. But again, if we do allow other users that aren't part of Eden, I'll be you know very careful to 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 do that to make sure that we don't lose that sense of community because community is everything. Without community, then I, I I don't think it'd be good. Right. Yeah. And I like I remember back in the day as well. There were a lot of uh, platforms that were trying to solve this problem of you know like social uh, social logins and like you can verify your friend but then if your friend like you know does something then you you get booted out but there were still all these people um you know gaming the system and, and it never really worked out it kind of um ended up hi how are you okay have fun um it kind of <laughs> sorry it, it kind of never really worked out um in in the way that that it would before um, but why don't you just give us a little general guide through of, um, of what people can expect when they come in and they log into the post? What, what sort of things can they do and, and what sort of, um, you know, uh, use cases uh, beyond just, you know, posting whatever you want to post does, does this platform have? Yep. Yep. So I guess the first thing is, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's eating it, it exclusive. So the people that you engage with and the content that you engage with um, will, will be done by other, other members of Eden um all of which are unique you know a unique identity so you can sort of expect that people aren't going to post i don't know whatever you want to call it um but, but basically anything that they say they're held accountable you know that their, their, their picture is there uh that their name's against it uh so they're, they're sort of part of that community uh second thing is the sort of ubi aspect so there's a free uh 50 bio tokens per day every every 24 hours that you can collect uh, so sort of free, free money, uh, in, in that aspect. And so we've posts, posts, not just post alone. Each post can be, uh, bidded on. So each post starts at 10 bio tokens. And then the next bid, uh, must be 130% of the, uh, the, the previous bid. Uh, and so with that, uh, 110% goes back to the original bidder. 10% goes to the author. And uh, ten percent gets burnt as well, so that just goes out of uh, circulation, and uh, is sort of deflationary in, in, in that aspect as well. Yeah, this, I think the 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 um, reward thing is really interesting. Um, what do you use Vio tokens for? Uh, yeah, uh, Vio tokens at the moment. Uh, Mainly, yeah, just just for bidding, but again, they're, they're, they're instantly uh, swappable, so you can trade them back for, for EOS at absolutely any time, uh, just by a, a, a bank or pool. Uh, but in the future, we've got some really cool stuff uh, going on. So uh, essentially down the track, you'll be able to invest your uh, bio tokens, basically staking against a uh, an, another user. And uh, what that means is if you stake your tokens against another user, 10% of the rewards that they collect will go towards a, a pool that, that you have access to. So you as, can essentially get a claim on the, the rewards another user collects over time as well. Uh, so again, that's good for YouTubers and things like that. So you know your, your fans uh, can, can, can jump on, they can stake their tokens against your profile. And should they unstake later after you've collected you know, rewards for your content, then they can uh, get get a cut there as well. 
Um, and so, like you said, like the, I guess, benefit of having a, um, an Eden ID is you kind of have to be responsible for what you post. Mm -hmm. um, and depending upon what country you're from might depend upon, you know, um, or how you grew up might depend upon what you what you deem is acceptable. But regardless of whatever you deem that is, you have to own that. You have to be like 100% okay with that, right? Like, I mean, yeah. if I wanted to go on, um, you know, and, and post, you know, uh, pictures that might be a little bit racy or might be like a little bit um, uh, controversial, that's okay, but I need to own that, right? Like people know it's yeah. coming from me. So, so it's not really easy to spam. Um, my question is, though, is there um, any like rules and regulations about like what's going too far or is this just kind of free and open to to the community? And if something does go too far, um, is there a process to have it removed or, or, or for somebody to appeal that, um, you know? Yeah, no, good question. Uh, at, at the moment, it's pretty free and open. Uh, I'm, I'm essentially placing a lot of trust into the existing, you know, Eden members not to post, you know, cra crazy things like that. But uh, yeah, there's always the, you know, the ability to sort of, you know, manually rip it out. Uh, and, and all the content that gets uploaded is uh, put into an RPFS hash and uploaded to RPFS. Uh, so in terms of taking it down, I can sort of, you know, delete the sort of chain record on the contract and um, unpin it from my RPFS service. But, uh, you know, RPFS is decentralized. So if there's other nodes out there that want to host that content, you know, it's, there's, you know, nothing I can do about it in, uh, in, in that aspect. So uh, I, I, I do like that because it's, yeah, it sort of, you know, makes it sort of essentially super resistant or, Again, you, you know, you're accountable for what, for what you say. So again, while I can, you know, delete it from, you know, my app, I can't, you know, delete it from from, from the greater network. And there's no such thing as, you know, deleting the the transaction that that put it there either, where the uh, the you know the RPFS hash will, will be there. I will eventually come up with, you know, your bloody terms and conditions and stuff like that uh, as 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 we mature and have some, you know, sort of bigger guidelines. Um, uh, but, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty open for now. Yeah. I mean, fair enough. And like different people are going to complain about different things. And like, yeah. like I said, you know, I worked for tribe for, for a couple years and, and we always had people saying, ah, oh, like you can't censor me. Like I have freedom of speech. And one of my favorite things that I like about Corey is like, um, he always says, uh, no, you don't like you do, but like you're misunderstanding it. Freedom of speech means that the government can't tell you what to say. It has nothing to do with coming on our platform and saying it, mm. right? Like, um, but I do think that there's power in the ability for the platform itself to be able to remove something, but it doesn't just disappear. It's still there in the background. Mm. It can still be found somewhere else because that, yeah. you know, adds another layer against corruption as well. And also another layer against uh, validity of, of like, okay, well, we removed this post because essentially you were being a, a giant, you know, a, a, a giant jerk. And, um, and uh, uh, you know, somebody says, oh, no, I wasn't. Well, it's there in the background. You, you can see it. Somebody else can see it, right? Uh, maybe you were having a bad day, what whatnot. Um, it doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, it's good. Um, so, I mean, in terms of adoption, um have because you you guys haven't been running uh, this for very long it, it's actually relatively new um have you noticed a lot of people coming in and and, and joining recently especially with uh, all that's happening um in the eden eden space uh now that people are knowing about it yeah yeah we've had a, a fair few uh i think there's like 180 per people in the sort of telegram 190 now uh People in the Telegram channel. It's only been up for a, a week and a few days, mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's been really good. And then uh, Dan Larimer as well uh, tweeted about it, so I think that got the attention of uh, other fellow Eden members. Uh, I also got a bunch of sort of errors on the server. You know, people trying to log in that don't have you know Eden accounts, and so I think you know interest outside of Eden uh, is, is is there as well. Yeah, um, I want to touch on that because uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, Dan. Uh, did come uh, in and uh, say, according to my understanding of it, um, what voice was supposed to be. I kind of mentioned this at the beginning of the show, um, which I kind of, I was kind of a little bit surprised. Like, you know, if I hear about this guy, John Williamson, who I, you know, I know a little bit about, but not too much. And he says to me, oh, this is what voice was supposed to be. I'm not going to think nothing of it. But when I hear someone like Dan come and say what voice, you know, should have been, 
Um, that's kind of like interesting because I remember him standing on stage and uh, uh, speaking about like the power of voice. And so I wonder, like maybe we're just speculating here on ideologies, but like it kind of seems like, you know, he's not necessarily impressed at the direction um, that voice would have taken. So um, even if it's not Dan's opinion, in your opinion, what are some of the issues that happened with voice and, and how are you guys, you know, looking to solve those things? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I don't know. With with voice, or how much did they get? Did they get like 200, 200 million dollars? They spent thirty million dollars on the domain. Like, that's, right? That's, yeah. Watch that's back half of watch back half of our shows, and Corey will Corey will you know throw that out there. Thirty million dollars on a fucking domain, and that's all we have—a domain that nobody's really using. I, I guess they're doing yeah. NFTs now. I, I don't know. They 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 keep I you know they keep doing things that other people have done and showing up to the yeah. party late and and it's yeah. kind of annoying but anyway go ahead right they got the domain what other problems did they have like i know for me i couldn't get in uh like i was in a wrong country which is crazy because mm. i live in japan right <laughs> so the fact that you have one of the most technologically advanced countries in the world and 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 they're like we were blocked we couldn't get in is nuts um but were there any other like issues that like maybe technical levels in terms of powering up or voting or, or these types of things that you see that you can uh, improve drastically yeah well i think uh technically it's pretty well done because you know it's it's uh they had block one behind them so in terms of you know their contract design and things like that you know i'm sure their developers would have been able to you know connect to well again you know the block one themselves would have had the best smart contract developers of esio given they made the the, the bloody thing um actually my, my biggest sort of pet peeve with uh the technical thing was um when you're trying to bid on a post, if someone bid, you know, you, you load it up and it says, you know, in the next bid, 160 tokens and you go to do it and it's like, oh, hang on. And, and, and you sign the transaction and there it is out because someone has, has just bid before you and then it's done. Uh, and you got to refresh the page to get the the, the, the next bid. Uh, so I designed mine away with, you know, web sockets. So basically the next bid in real time will, will will increment and so you can just see the bid walls you know happening in real time uh and i think that's important as well because eos is so quick so yeah it's it's uh it's it's a shame if you if, if you don't uh take advantage of you know all these transactions you know flying through and and uh, and not animating that on the page so um i'm a fan of that but uh in terms of sort of voices failure and, and having to pivot uh Again, we live in a world where, like you know, Uber and uh, and you know those scooter companies and stuff like that. You know, they they adopted the you know, uh, don't ask permission now, just go ahead and do it, and then you know ask for forgiveness or or, or, or tackle it, you know, uh, later kind of thing. And uh, it's it seems like you, that that's the way to, to get stuff done, eh? Uh, you know, I think if Uber, you know, went, went with trying to get permission and, and and getting things approved, they they never would have you know got off the ground. Uh, same same with those you know scooter companies. And so you know, Block One comes and you know Voice comes, and what's the first thing they do? They ask for permission. They bloody you know they regulate themselves hardcore where they restrict you know users and you got to be in the right country in order to to to, to join. Uh, and so my theory is that they, you know, created the, um, you know, the paperwork and they asked permission to say, hey, can we launch a token in the United States with, you know, these dynamics and blah, blah, blah. And it probably just sat on some, you know, bureaucrat's desk and it, it never moved. And, uh, you know, and I think they were just running out of time or I, I, I don't know, but they eventually, you know, decided to pivot. But to NFTs, I don't know, it's... Like I'm not saying that they, you know, they, they they can't make money. They might do well, but you know, there's this, there's no shortage of NFT platforms out there, eh? So unless they're bringing something new to the table, you know, I'm not too uh, impressed with it. Especially how they got a, uh, you know, that the, it it's all running on a private chain, I believe. Which, um, yeah, I'm a bit, you know, iffy about. Especially that they deleted the, uh, the you know, the, the, the voice chain themselves. So if they can delete one chain that people put their content on. You know, <laughs> could, could 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 they delete? You know, the the, the next one for whatever, whatever reason. Uh, so, 
Yeah, I mean, in terms of in terms of private chains, the only one that I've ever saw that I kind of felt you know was okay uh, was like what Blockbase does. But Blockbase isn't really a private chain; it's more of like an encrypted chain, right? And so you yeah. still have like it's still decentralized. You have these server pr 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 providers and service users. But yeah, if you can just uh, yeah, if you can just pull the chain. Um, it, it's basically the equivalent of, yeah, just deleting your NFT and then it's gone. And you, you thought you had this thing in your wallet, but you don't. And, yeah. um, you know, that's es essentially what they, they wanted to purport. So, um, if you're okay, I, I actually, let's take a little bit of break and, and put some, uh, gratitudes up, uh, cause we haven't done that yet. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, go into the metaverse and, um, we'll, uh, spear some fud with the giant trident um i'm where am i oh, i'm way away from home so uh, i figured you were here today so uh it would be a good uh it would be a good opportunity for us to uh uh come back over to uh jenner eos land and and put uh, uh put some gratitudes on the wall so uh, i don't know if you're familiar with this uh with this uh, uh john but uh this is our metaverse uh right now uh, most of our NFTs are, are residing on on Wax, just because um, that's the place that uh, is easier easiest to run it on. But uh, yeah, this is the Uplift world, and we come in here at the beginning of every show, um, and 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 we put some gratitudes. Uh, we tell people, um, you know, we ask people uh, what they're thankful for, and uh, we put them usually in in Uplift or Tower. But there's a bunch of uh, different plots around. So, um, uh, what what are you grateful for, um, John? <sighs> I'm uh, grateful for the the Eden community and the uh, philosophy of Dan Loma. Oh, that's weird. What's happening? Uh, uh, there we go. Okay, sorry. Um, I forgot that I, I forgot that I changed this. Uh, the Eden community and the philosophy of uh, of Dan Larmer. Okay, I mean that's a that's a pretty um, that's a pretty good one. Sorry, uh, you think I see? I like being a podcaster um, because like it wasn't something that I ever thought that I would um, ever do, and. Uh, no matter how perfect I think I am, I get a reality check. Um, there we go. And uh, it tells me um, that I've still got so much to learn. There we go. Uh, done. W I W I L L I A M S O N. Right. Williamson yep, correct. Is grateful for the ES community. The ES community? Uh, Eden. Eden community. And what was the other one? Philosophy of Dan Larima. It's not going to fit. Uh, let's do Dan <laughs> Larimer. <laughs> That's fine. And uh, Eden Community. Uh, all right, cool. Um, I'm grateful for people like you, actually, John. Um, uh, uh, who are constantly trying to um, make, you know, our social experiences, especially online, uh, better and, and more uh, driven, more efficient, uh, more secure, uh, safer, um, more valuable. Um, so uh, Jimmy D is grateful for people like John, always 
bettering. There we go. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's not an easy thing to do um, to, like you said, compete against voice or, or compete against um, Facebook. Or, these, these, these companies are very tailored in what they do. Um, but there's a lot of issues. There's a, a lot of, um, there's a lot of problems. Um, and so I think like the more that we do and, and the better that we, uh, try to, um, fix the problems that we might be having, um, the better off that we'll be. And there's social platforms across all of, uh, all of the things. But if you could. I mean, I guess you're in the process of doing it, but there's always going to be hurdles, right? Um, mm -hmm. But if you could design um, the best social experience for everyone, because I've been thinking a lot about this, uh, you know, having got my start in the, in the social area and then watching um, uh, the Netflix uh, video about the social dilemma and thinking about how, um, you know, a lot of these, social media platforms that we take for granted that we just use are actually basically just farming our data, right? Like we're mm -hmm. um, just essentially being taken advantage of left, right, and center. And, yep. and like a lot of people don't read anymore. Um, they just kind of, you know, throw out a headline, retweet something that they don't really have any awareness with. So if you could design a, a social platform that you know, could be used um, in an educational way to like actually make people smarter, right? Because to me, I don't know about you, but to me, that's actually important to make people more informed, to make people smarter, not not dumber, not not to make people, you know, uh, buy into something or, 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 or to, to use them to, you know, market to. Um, what, what would you do uh, in that way? Uh, I, it's a really loaded question and probably a different, difficult one to answer. But, um, you know, is there something that we could do uh, with a social platform that would, you know, turn the whole industry on its end and, 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 and enable people as opposed to use them? Uh, yeah, well, I think it all comes down to incentives uh, with, with, with the economics uh so facebook is is based on essentially you know surveillance capitalism and uh the, the better they do the, the more money they get but if you're a facebook user you know you don't get get a cut a single cut of, of, of any of the money do you you're just again again if you're not if you don't uh, you know pay for the product you are the product uh kind of thing and so that's what they're they're based on, and, and, and that's how you know the, the, the people get 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 used, and their data gets used, and uh, it, it goes against their interests. Um, I'd say probably the best social media is, is, is no social media, possibly. <laughs> but um, I, I I think after that, you know, if, if we are going to live in a world where we use you know social media and we do have all this information and stuff like that, um, we gotta. Again, it's just, you know, voice voice mentioned it back in the day, but again, you know, rather than all the money go to the top, you know, all, all the money goes to goes to Facebook at the moment. But uh, you know, if we do have ads and things like that, you know, if we charge for the ads, uh, you know, not in US dollars that just go directly to Facebook, but instead in in, in bio tokens, right? And then as we accept the bio tokens, so say you want to place an ad, you know, on on the home page or do whatever it is. Uh, the, the 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 person you know buying the ads they have to buy say a thousand tokens and then what, what we do is we, we burn those those tokens and so that's that's token you know got gone out in, in inflation right and so th in theory that the, the price goes up so the, the the money comes back to to to, to the user because i i don't get a cut out of those one thousand you know bio tokens um the 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 incentives that, that I'm going to create and and uh, and where you know Violet Garden you know as, as a company takes its cut is purely from inflation, so I'm I'm not going to succeed and you know, I'm not going to become you know some 
50 billion dollar company or, or whatever it might be like like facebook can and, and give nothing back 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 to the customer other than a platform just to post their content on uh so if if i succeed if violet garden successful then again the token holders and and the people that use it are successful as well uh and i think again you know making it as, as transparent as, as, as possible um, because some of the algorithms, I'm sure they're, they're beneficial, that they're, they're, they're smart and stuff like that, but they gotta be bloody transparent. You know, we, we have to know how, how, how these work. Uh, so, so things like that, you know, adopting open source, you know, things being, being open, uh, letting people decide, you know, how they want to consume the content and what content they want to consume, uh, as, as, as well. Um, I guess that's, you know, what's healthy. I, I probably haven't answered your question in terms of, you know, what's, I was no, I, I, look I, I mean, smarter, I, but um, I think it was a great answer. If I'm honest, like, feel free to continue. But like, like, I it was a really weird question, and I I love what you're saying. So continue if you want, for sure. But yeah, well, if if we, if we define smarter as just more mindful, I think yeah, that that's how how, how we go. You know, we we have to be more mindful. Uh, I think you know information can be a bit like food. Some of it is like just junk food, just completely, you know, useless information that is just not gonna, not gonna help us. Uh, and, and, and then there's, you know, good, good information that, you know, sort of nourishes the, the soul and it's something that builds you up as, as, a, as a person. So, you know, Facebook and stuff like bloody TikTok, that's just pure, pure junk food, you know, the way that it's, you know, sent out and, uh, and how nothing, you know, gets back to, back to you. So, uh, yeah, I think, you know, good social media uh, sort of helps the user become, you know, mindful, as transparent in what it does. And, and again, it reimburses, you know, the user as well, because, you know, your attention is, is, is worth money. That's, that's why Facebook has is, is, is made so much money, because they have your attention. So why not let the, the money trickle down, back, you know, back down to you, you know, for, for your attention, rather than just the, 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 the sort of junk food content that, that you dish back instead, and then that's it. Well, and I think incentivizing users with value actually, in a way, creates a, a much better scenario for mindfulness, right? Because how yeah. often, like, I, I don't use Facebook very often, but I go on there occasionally because I have friends and family on there, like maybe, you know, once or twice a month and, and scroll through. And, and like, I don't hate it. Like, you know, I enjoy some things that some people post. But um, I find with a lot of Facebook things, people get angry if you, if, you know, you don't like it. You see this all the time, right? Hey, I posted. You didn't like my post. It's like, well, your post wasn't likable for me. Yeah, but you're yeah. supposed to be my friend. You're supposed to support me, right? And so I think it's interesting what you did with Violet Garden because you didn't throw the whole thing out. Like, obviously, you liked the scenario whereby you could upvote other people's posts. You could bid them out. You could have that kind of race. Um, to the top to be able to have a share in the value that that post puts out there. And so you saw some merit, some value um, that, you know, bro voice brought to the table and, and, and you wanted to keep that and you optimized it in a better way. And like, I think that's really interesting because a lot of projects in the real world and in blockchain, they don't do that. They just throw everything out and they start over from scratch, right? Rather than adapting and, and, and being, you know, malleable um, to something that already exists, they, they try to build everything from, from the bottom. And I think that's really valuable. Now, whether it works or whether it doesn't, I don't know. I mean, it sounds to me like you believe that it, it, it will work and that's flipping awesome. And you're not just some dude who's, you know, uh, walking uh, out of university or, or, or off of the uh, shelf uh, working on a completely, you know, different project. You've been doing this for four or five years at the very least, and you've already, you know, how to go at doing it in the blockchain space. So I'm really excited to see what you bring to the table. And, and I'm really happy that you don't want to be the next Mark Zuckerberg. You, you, know, <laughs> you, you don't want to like, you know, uh, throw everyone under the bus just to make that million dollars. Cause I think that's valuable in itself as well. Thank so. you. Did you, um, so you ran uh, yep. on the platform for, you know, creating this, uh, you know, revamped social media thing. Um, yep. Have you gotten or secured or looked into getting funding? Because right now the EOS space is quite interesting. If we remember like back again, two or three years ago, there was almost no funding available for anything. And now oh. there's funding, like there's funding through um, Eden, there's funding through the EOS Foundation, EOS Starter is giving out funding. I think Pond Mello is getting out funding. Um, are you exploring other avenues for funding or um, is like, 
something like bringing advertisements from companies and things like that a possibility or would you like to just keep it strictly social and, and not have any any paid advertisements come on the platform at all i do like the idea of uh, advertisements but again i, I want to do it in the, in, in, in the right way uh so again you're not going to get bloody pop-up ads and crap like that uh and and and, and, and again i think like, because initially, you know, advertisements just make me want to roll my eyes. But again, in, in, in this case, this, you know, to put an advertisement on, you know, the homepage, that's, that's going to cost, you know, money, right? And, and and that money is going to go back to the token holders. So, yeah, there might be an ad, but, you know, it's going to increase the, the, the token price of that 50 via tokens that, that you're getting, you know, every, every day. Uh, so I think that's just a, a, a bit of a game changer uh, there. So... Uh, yeah, ads. Uh, I, I, I want to experiment, at least experiment with, uh, and, and and let's just remember that you know each user on there at the moment is um is 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 a needed member. So again, they're still accountable for what they advertise as well. So um, you know, I don't think you're going to see ads for erectile dysfunction anytime soon. Um. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why anyone would. Yeah, this this like there's lots of blue pills that do lots of different things. Just advertise blue pills. Enough with the blue. We need the blue. Yeah, um, but then for funding, I want to go. Uh, yeah, Pomelo seems like the way to go. Um, from from what I've heard and and all the crazy stuff that they're doing for you know how projects are funded and stuff like that. So. That's the way that I want to do it, but um, for yeah, my, my my pitch with um with Eden, I decided yeah you know a, a little while back that like I don't want to just sell an idea. Like I'm sick of ideas saying oh you know I'm gonna build this and it's gonna cure cancer and it's gonna do this and it's gonna do that and like I'm 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 over it kind of thing. So that's why uh you know I sort of built Violet Garden as, as as quickly as I did. You know I, I was set. It was like oh you know. October 1st will be the the release date, no matter what state it's in. And, you know, the state that I released it, it wasn't, wasn't you know, amazing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting it out there and I'm, I'm going to get to let the Eden community, you know, play with it, get get in a, you know, prop, get, a, get a proper taste of it rather than just, you know, sell them on another idea. Uh, and so, yeah, that, that was sort of, you know, I think that's what helped, you know, with, with, with my pitch as well. Uh, you know, talk is cheap, show me the code kind of thing. Yeah, it's such a different. I don't know how long you've been in blockchain for. For me, I got in uh, kind of right right before things blew up and at the end of 2017, so uh, kind of late. Uh, um, but I just remember all of these projects that were, you know, going to change the world, and um, all of the projects that, like, you know, five or six months later, like I didn't even know where they were. Like they were just gone, right? <laughs> and yeah. So it's like uh, mostly in Ethereum back in those days. But like you know, now we've got all these other projects, and for the most part, it seems like the majority of projects are trying to, um, you know, not promise things that that they that they can't deliver. At least in the space that we're hanging out in, which is nice. And that these new funding uh, incentives that are coming out from the community are also really nice. So. Um, if, if I, if, if I might ask you one more question, I, I know we got to go soon, but one more question, which I'm kind of interested yeah. in, um, you were in, uh, a couple rooms, uh, with just some all-stars, uh, in the space mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, in terms of, you know, the Eden on EOS election and all of these people, you know, vying for, um, funding. Right. And, and of course, uh, if you, if you don't know, um, Aaron Cox, which I think is like extremely well deserving of it yeah. um you know he ended up uh taking home the grand prize if you will but it, you know the aspect of um it kind of being randomized mm -hmm. at the end um, yeah. i'm kind of curious on your decision of that uh first of all <laughs> uh, sorry i'm kind of curious on your outlook on that like is that a good thing to have that randomized or did did, did you kind of feel like um is it a bit of a letdown uh, if you make it to the end and, and you don't win it or, or like, is that a trade off worth having, I guess? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm a fan of the uh, statistician uh, that, that that's used. I, I know a fair few people, you know, don't quite like it and think it should just be like any other round where, you know, the people vote for, for who goes on top. 
but uh, I just I just love the the sort of protection that, that that we get along, you know, with that. It sort of you know prevents you know things like you know vote, vote buying, or makes it a lot more expensive and risky to do anyway. Because you know, say if you send a bunch of uh, you know people people in there, you know, that there's still a what a one in six chance that you know the pers- people that you pay and you know and and, uh, and the corruption that you've kind of you know put in there that is actually going to you know pay off. Um, it also keeps the community. But, but perhaps you could say sort of anti-fragile in, in the sense that we can't rely on the one noble leader. Like, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, glad that, that, that we did get, you know, Aaron. It's pretty amazing that, you know, the sortition, you know, picked him because, you know, I think he would have been the best, you know, going for it. I think uh, he's, he's very well trusted in, in the community and, and everyone's a fan of, of his work. Uh, but it, it, at least, yeah, we, we've sortition, you know, we can't re- rely on him kind of thing. We can't say, okay, we'll, let's elect him again. Or let's elect him for the next, you know, 10 terms. And then suddenly, you know, he has a heart attack, he gets hit by a bus and then we're just left with, with, with it all going to shit kind of thing. So where it's, it's going to force us to, you know, get, get, get a new leader. We'll most likely get a new leader every, every, every term. And, um, yeah, not, not not to become you know re- reliant on the one guy, and also be ready to sort of you know kick out you, you know say you know, maybe a bad leader kind of thing. So you know say someone gets in and they're horrible and, and no one likes them and you know they've done something corrupt. You know we, we'll be able to sort of you know kick them out you know quickly and and be in a position where you know we, we already know what the flow is, we know what the procedure is for you know getting a new person in, rather than you know have Aaron there for say ten years or whatever. And then it's like, oh crap, Aaron's gone. You know, how the hell do we, you know, <laughs> adapt to another an, another leader? Uh, to you know, what's the password to the Twitter account? You know, it's, it's, it's just it's little things like that. So yeah, it, it keeps us on our toes. Um, and as as this becomes bigger, it becomes more and more you know important uh, as, as as well. Yeah, I think the SNAP election process for me is really nice. And, and um, you know, I've said this a few times over, over the last, you know, couple of weeks, but uh, um, when Mr. Pompiano uh, said uh, not so long ago, um, something that really has been resonating with me, right? Like if if we need to be accountable um, for, for our blockchain gains, um, then shouldn't the government be accountable for their block for their campaign promises? And I, mm. I like I, I'm not against taxes actually. Um, I I do believe if you drive on a road that you should pay a portion of it, right? Like I, I I'm I'm not like for crazy taxes like what we have now. But I do believe that if you're homeless, you should be able to get you know uh, proper health care and medicine. So I'm kind of in the middle, split on this. But what I like about um, you know, this process that, that's been set up with Eden is in, in one sense, um, you are uh, held accountable for your c- campaign promises, right? If you just take that first, you know, installment or the second installment of money and nothing happens or, or you just run off with it, um, you know, that's a little bit of money lost to the community, but it's not all the funding that's gone, right? Like mm-hmm. the other chief delegates and the other members of the community can come in and call a snap election and just be like, no, this, this guy's like, he's, he's out of here. Like, you know, we're, we're going to replace them. We're going to do another election. We're going to do the whole process over again. So I don't know uh, if we'll ever see that, to be honest, because you're putting a lot of uh, uh, merit on the line or value on the line. But like you said, you, you don't know, like what happens if, you know, knock on wood, um, somebody has some major problem and they can't, you know, resume. Um, so, but yeah, um, you know what? I really uh, enjoyed uh, listening to um, you uh, and your perspectives on, you know, what socials could be, um, and what you're aiming for. And I know you've only been at this for a week, but, um, you know, I can kind of feel the momentum building. Um, people have been emailing me, Hey, you got to go in, like, you know, get, get register, get your bio tokens. <laughs> um, and, uh, it feels like almost like early days, uh, in blockchain right now in, in a lot mm. of, in, in a lot of ways, uh, you know, the hype and the drive and, and, and now with the funding that are coming back. So uh, what are you the most looking forward to um, about, you know, EOS in, in, in the coming months? Like, I don't think that we're at the peak of the bull run yet. I think we've got a little bit more to go. We'll probably have a bear, but, you know, as the hype builds, um, what are your takes? What do you think um, is, is, is possible, I guess, this time around? 
Yeah, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, EOS Foundation and, and Eve. I've got a feeling they've got some, you know, rabbits to pull out of a hat. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm keen on that. Uh, but I'm also keen on, yeah, working out, you know, seeing w w what exactly um, Eden is going to do, what what we're going to produce, how we're going to organize things, you know, the, uh, and sort of, you know, Dan's uh, arbitration uh, stuff as well. Um so yeah, I'm very excited for that. You know, how we can sort of have you know decentralized governance and sort of dispute resolution. I think is going to be uh, amazing. And then and you know the, the ways that we're going to have it. You know, with fees and you know and and, uh, and the whole you know sort of not not the suing process, but basically you know the, the damages and how you know the, Dan, Dan's got a whole retake on on how that can be done and things like that. So I love it. It's it's, it's such a cool you know experiment you know kind of thing. It also feels so. Again, we're, we're, we're building it from the ground up. So it feels kind of like Wild West, eh? Like, you know, we, we can write the smart contracts, you know, we get to, you know, write the, you know, the the laws in, in, in our you know, little world and in, in, in our community. So, yeah, it feels like we're all sort of, you know, pioneers. Uh, so, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, e Eden, uh, we know what, what we're going to produce with Violet Garden and then, uh, and then EOS Foundation as well. Well, it's, it's always a tough one too, right? Like, cause I was again, quite vocal. Um, I tend to be, uh, when Dan left and, and I wrote an article on it and, and I thought it was fairly balanced, but I thought like the, the worst part about it was that essentially he resigned on hive and I was like, oh man, I, like you, no, you can't just resign on hive because then people thought it was a scam and like it all went, you know, wily. Um, but you know, before we really knew what was going on, um, uh, I wrote an article about it and I said, look, like it, this could be one of the better things, right? Like maybe um, he's just been muffed. Like maybe he can't speak. Maybe he can't do anything. Like maybe um, this is a problem. And and going back to what you said earlier about, um, and, and I think he's kind of proved that, right? Like I think he's proved that with this book, with Eden, like coming back yeah. to the community, feeling more energized as well. But going back to what you said about voice, right? I wonder if voice would have been different if it wasn't launched by Block One. I wonder if they have the funding that they had and they were like an independent um, company, like you said, that just went out there and built something. I wonder if things would have gone the other way. And I guess your, uh, you and, and, and Violet Garden is, is our chance to see um, that potential and, and to kind of mm. answer that question in a way. So I'm really looking forward to uh, everything that you bring. And um, yeah, I, I, I hope to have you back, uh, you know, here or maybe over on the Generios channel or, and definitely I, I want to have you on a round table uh, over on the crypto writer channel. Cause I think putting you with some other developers who are doing things like on a social aspect or on a funding aspect would be a really fun conversation for us to have. So um, thanks for everything, John. And, and I hope that you come back and visit us sometime uh, soon. Yeah, definitely. I will. Thanks a lot for having me. All right. Uh, that's it. We'll be back in about an hour um, with um, Everstake, who uh, is a little project that's all over the blockchain space that was uh, launched uh, by Attic Lab, uh, which is a pretty uh, well-known uh, EOS block producer. So uh, come join us. Uh, we're hoping to learn a lot from them as well and delve into a little bit of uh, what they're doing beyond the EOS space. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks all and uh, see you next time.